Hello YouTube and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to look at decimal numbering systems. So the general idea behind them. Now the reason why we're doing all of this is I have noticed very often in tertiary or higher education that people very often don't actually understand the concept of decimal. It has always been something that's been puzzling to me especially coming out of school that they don't always know exactly where the numbers come from. So we're going to be covering their bases or powers. We're going to be looking at the generalized mathematics behind these bases. We're going to look at various different values. We're going to look at the, the names, specifically English names for the various different decimal characters. We're then going to look at the logic and then we are going to conclude this with just the general concepts of counting. So a base in effect is the number of values that you will use within your numbering system. So in other words, when you are incrementing by one, for example, which is what we do when we count. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. That means that you have 10 unique numbers within this numbering system. In mathematics, 10 to the power of 0 would equal 1. 10 to the power of 1 is equal to 10. 10 to the power of 2 is equal to 10 times 10. 10 to the power of 3 is 10 times 10 times 10. And 10 to the power of 4 is 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. Meaning that the values that you will be associated with the decimal numbering systems would be 1, 10, 100, 1000, and 10,000. This will obviously carry on indefinitely because 10 to the power of 5 would be 100,000, 10 to the power of 6 would be 1 million, and so we would continue infinitely. The English names that we would then apply to this, 10 to the power of 0, meaning 1, means that this is the units column. Now we're going to explain specifically what the 1 actually means in just a moment, so just bear with me, but just think of the 10 to the power of 0 or the 1's column as the units column. 10 to the power of 1, which we would refer to as the 10's column, is basically because obviously 10 to the power of 1 is 10. 10 to the power of 2 would give us the 100's column. 10 times 10 equals 100, so therefore it's the 100's column. You guessed it, the next one would be the thousands column because 10 times 10 times 10 is 1000, right? So that is a thousandth column. And again, we can continue all the way through to infinity on this 10,000, 100,000, 1 million, etc. This defines our numbering structure in decimal. And this is going to make a little bit more sense uh, in a moment or two. Just bear with me because we will show the specific logic behind all of this as we go along. But the important thing to note is that when we talk about tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, etc., these are English names, meaning that they are actually only really unique theoretically to the English language. If you are speaking a different language, for example, you might have a whole new word for this. So that tens, hundreds, thousands is literally just made up. So to look at the actual characters themselves, you are looking at a zero, one, two, three, four. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Now again, in other languages, the characters might look different. Like for example, Mandarin, you would have different characters. So in summary, what you're basically saying is that powers or bases just means that this is the number of numbers that you're going to use in your numbering system. And these are represented in column. So 10 to the power of 0, which would, would be your units column. 10 to the power of 1 will be your tens column. 10 to the power of 2 will be your hundreds column. 10 to the power of 3 would be your thousands column. 10 to the power of 4 would be your ten thousands column, and so forth. And that the characters that will be used is 0 going up to 9. So let's start to explore the logic of numbering systems. You get a bit more of a detailed um, understanding of what it is specifically that we're looking at with regards to base 10. So when we look at 10 to the power of 0, remember that we said that this is the units column. And we're saying that that is equal to 1. We are actually going to see each character once only within that given sequence. In other words, if I look at this, I've got 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 
But what I don't see is like zero zero one 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 two one three one four etc. They're not mixed up. They are actually perfectly in sequence, perfectly aligned, going from one zero one two three four five six seven eight nine. So they are ordered. Now, when you look at 10 to the power of 1, which is known to be 10, or the 10's column, right, using the same numbers, 0 up until 9, this means that each one of these is going to repeat 10 times. So, in other words, each number within the sequence is going to repeat 10 times. So, what do we mean by this? It means that if I look at my number of zeros here, those are 10 zeros. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So those are 10 zeros. And you'll notice that the 10th zero is perfectly in line with number 9. So what this means is that if I then have 10 to the power of 2, which is equal to 100, using 0 to 9, it means I would actually end up with 100 zeros. Obviously we're not going to go that far down the line because this will be a, an immensely large table. We will have a summary table demonstrating this in just a few moments. What happens here? Because this is where things get quite interesting. So you, you'll notice that 9 is the last character. Why do we know that 9 is the last character? Because that is the 10th number. So 9 is a 10th number. So there are no other characters after that. What this means is that when I then increment, because 8 plus 1 is 9, so 9 plus 1 would normally give me 10. But where this comes from is simple, purely because of the fact that we run out of characters. So 9 plus 1 is equal to 0, because 9 resets back to 0 because of the 1. And we carry 1. And 1 plus an imaginary zero equals one, which then is what gives us this value over here. So there we have 10. The important thing is to note this specific concept where it's the last number incremented by one. And when we increment that last number, it resets back to zero, we carry one, and then 1 plus whatever the number is in front of that last number is equal to the value down below. So just to summarize that, just to keep this nice and tidy. So 10 to the power of 0 equals 1. This means that each character shows once consecutively before recycling again. 0 to 9 is our counting range. So we are counting from 0 up until and including 9. This is then represented within our units column that we are currently seeing here. Remember that 10 to the power of 0 equals 1. That is our units column. So that represents as 10 unique characters within, within our units column. If we have 10 to the power of 1 equals 10, this means that we are still counting to a range of 0 up until including 9. And it just means that each number is now repeating 10 times within that specific column. Also note, as many zeros in front of a number as you like, you just cannot have them behind. So in other words, 0, 9 equals 9. But 9, 0 does not equal 9. So with that out of the way, let's go and have a look at counting. So... What we have done here is I've just separated everything. Currently you don't see blue here, but just note for later reference that blue is going to be represented by hundreds, red is going to be represented by tens, and white is going to be represented by units. So if I have a look at my first numbers here, so this is the beginning of counting cycle. You'll notice that I've got 0, 0, which is still 0, 0, 1, which is 1, 0, 2, which is 2, 0, 3, which is 3, there's 4, there's 5, there's 6, there is 7, there is 8, and there is 9. Remember that we can have as many zeros in front of a number as we want, we just cannot have them behind. So, in other words, if we don't want to change the number, we can still have as many zeros in front. I can have three zeros 
in front of a 1, for example, and that would still equal 1. So we just cannot reverse it. We cannot have, as a recap, 1, 0, 0, 0, because that does not equal to 1. So here I have 0, 9. And we know from previously that if we have a 0, 9, and we increment this by 1, 9 plus 1 resets back to 0, and we carry 1. And 1 plus 0 is equal to 1. So this is the number 10, which will go here. So there is 10. Then we have 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19. So what's going to happen again? So there we have 19, which we're going to increment by 1. 9 plus 1 is 0, carry 1. And 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. So now we've got 20, which is going to go into the next row. So there we have 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. We'll do one more, but I'm sure that everyone's probably getting the hang of this now. So there is 29 plus 1. We know that 9 plus 1 resets back to 0, and we carry 1. And 2 plus 1 is 3, so that gets written over here. So there's 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39. And so we can keep going all the way up until the point that we reach 90. 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, and 99. And once we hit 99, and we want to now increment this, so we can go ahead and increment this by 1. 9 plus 1, you know, resets back to 0, and we carry 1. But we know that 9 plus 1 also, again, resets back to 0. So, carry 1. And we know that we can have as many zeros in front of a number as we like. So, 1 plus the imaginary 0 gives me 1. So, that now gives me 100 which goes over here. So just make sure that you're familiar with this. I hope you enjoyed your time here with me today, YouTube. Uh, leave a like and a comment should you like what you see. And I look forward to seeing you all again soon.